Today we're talking tacos, specifically the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. This is a complete ground up redesign that will kick off the fourth generation of the Tacoma. I'm talking headlines like a new engine including a hybrid powertrain plus a new platform, suspension and so forth. And this truck was designed, engineered and assembled for North America. Here's the thing, America loves trucks. And the latest battleground for car makers is mid-sized pickups. Today we're looking at how the 2024 Tacoma compares with competitors including the Honda Ridgeline. Chevy Colorado, Nissan Frontier, Ford Ranger, and GMC Canyon. I'll also reveal some hidden Easter eggs in the 2024 model, and we'll also see how the Tacoma differs from the indestructible Toyota Hilux. I'll also share with you the bad and ugly about this truck. The Toyota Hilux, in case you're not aware, is a popular truck overseas. It's been around since 1968 and is known for legendary durability and relatively high payload capacity for a mid-sized pickup. The thing is, here in the States right now, we don't see any new Hiluxes anymore. Originally, Toyota did sell it in the U.S., but then, in 1995, Toyota created the Tacoma for America and discontinued the Hilux here in the States. Now, if you're assuming the 2024 Tacoma shares some of its looks with the Toyota Hilux, well, let me bust some misconceptions here. I hate to break it to you, but the truth is, the new Tacoma isn't just a reworked Hilux for America. Let me break it down. Let's start with the skeleton. And by that, I mean the platform it's built on. The 2024 Tacoma shares the same TNGAF platform which we see in the current Tundra and Sequoia and the new Lexus LX. Basically, it's a box steel ladder frame. And because of it, the new Tacoma rides on a longer wheelbase, like four inches longer. Although the overall truck length remains more or less the same as before. But overall, this means the new Tacoma should feel lighter and have a better ride quality than the previous models. By contrast, the Hilux in recent times was built on the IMV body on frame platform that was in the Toyota Fortuner, yet another SUV which Toyota markets overseas. But the newer Hilux, the new generation I mean, is based on the same TNGAF platform that's in the new Tacoma. Reason is to accommodate hybrid powertrains which is expected for 2025. Historically, the biggest difference between the Hilux and the Tacoma has been how they're used. The Hilux is more of a tool. The Tacoma, on the other hand, is a lifestyle truck. It's almost like the difference between camping versus glamping. The Hilux is made to handle super hot climates and places without roads. I'm talking deserts in the Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia. That's why it has a locomotive of an engine that's also fuel efficient. I'm talking about a turbo diesel, where the larger displacement, which is 2.8 liters, offers 200 run horses, 370 pound-feet of torque from just 1,600 RPM. Now don't get me wrong, you can off-road in a Tacoma or use it as a work truck too, but it's less stiff, less rugged, and really it's more of an enthusiast truck. Let me put it into perspective. The Hilux can carry up to 2,200 pounds, where the Tacoma does 1,709 with the TRD off-road trim. The Hilux can also tow up to 7,716 pounds as opposed to the 6,500 that the Tacoma can handle. When I say the Tacoma is more lifestyle trucks for Americans, just look at the double cab Tacoma, for example. It's two inches wider than a comparable Hilux. It's clear that Tacoma was designed for Americans here in America, which has wider roads. But let's talk about the new Tacoma's powertrain. For the 2024 model, Toyota ditched the V6 engine. We're talking about a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four with an eight speed automatic that outputs up to 278 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque for the base model. To put that in perspective, that's more horses than the 2024 Ford Ranger or Chevy Colorado base models. The Ranger has a 2.3 liter EcoBoost that produces 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, whereas the Chevy Colorado, which was fully redesigned for this year's 2023 model, offers a 2.7 liter inline four that starts out at 237 horsepower for the base model. But now, the Nissan Frontier Pro 4X and GMC Canyon AT 4X both outbeat the new Tacoma, each outputting 310 horse, as does the Honda Ridgeline with its 3.5 liter V6 that gives you 280 horsepower. That said, the 2024 Tacoma will also be available as a hybrid version that outputs 326 horses and 465 pound-feet of torque. And the hybrid version is only beaten by the Ford Ranger Raptor, which outputs 405 horses because of its twin-turbo 3-liter V6 engine. By the way, speaking of the hybrid system, here's the big question that might blow your mind. So it has a combustion engine, but it also has a battery and electric motor. So how deep can the hybrid wade through water? Can it go as deep as the gas-powered version or previous version Tacoma? Can it survive a water crossing? 
Well, it turns out the hybrid is based on a 48 volt system. If you were to get a water leak in a hybrid system, it's not as dangerous as a 200 something volt one. Generally, it's risky to go through super high water because it can hydroelectric your engine and mess up some of the electronics of the truck. So far, there's no official word from Toyota on this. My guess, probably they're reviewing all safety legalities. Toyota's offering eight trims, and some of the trims give you the option for a six-speed manual. Now, six of the trims carry over from the 2023 model, namely the SR, SR5, TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road, the Limited, and TRD Pro. But two of these trims are brand new. I'm talking about the Trail Hunter and the TRD Pre-Runner model, which Toyota just revived since it went on a hiatus in 2015. The Trail Hunter is a factory built overlanding vehicle for Americans who seek adventure travel. Toyota designed it to be an adventure ready and camping ready. It was designed in-house by Toyota engineers. The Trail Hunter trim and the upper trims come with multi-link coil spring rear suspension, whereas lower trims come with leaf springs. The Trail Hunter features integrated scene lights. Basically, they're thin rectangular light units on the black trim. And this trim is ready to support any auxiliary lighting system. If you want to install it because it's pre-wired for accessories that you can control by three toggle switches on the dash. The Trail Hunter also comes with a high-mounted air intake on the passenger side A-pillar, in case you're inclined to cross high water. By the way, off-roaders like to refer to the raised air intake as a snorkel. But legally, Toyota doesn't call it because they don't want to be held liable if trucks are submerged underwater, and obviously, Toyota doesn't want customers to sue them or claim a warranty. By the way, speaking of off-roading, the TRD Sport and TRD Pro both come with hood scoops, but actually they're fake. They're not functional. It's simply for aesthetic purposes. In fact, even the inlets underneath the headlights are fake because there aren't any radiators and therefore it doesn't need it for cooling. Anyway, the Tacoma comes in different configurations. For example, the four-door double cab pairs with either a short five-foot bed or a long six-foot bed. The two-door extra cab comes with the long bed. Now, previous tacos were criticized for their uncomfortable cabins, especially in the second row of the crew cab version. But you can see improvements in the area in the 2024 model, particularly the new Tacoma TRD Pro trim, which comes with isodynamic performance, seats in the front. Basically, they have their own shock absorbers to cushion your ride. Overall, the styling is similar to what we see inside the latest Tundra and Sequoia. And of course, there's more technology. For example, the new Tacoma comes available with a 14-inch touchscreen, which is a huge growth spurt, considering the previous model was 8 inches and outdated. And now, this is where the fun starts. Toyota hit some fun Easter eggs in the new Tacoma. First, think of Taco Mountains. No, not that. I'm talking about this. It's a teeny tiny hidden mountain range. You might have to squint to find it, but it's on the Tacoma's front windshield. Really, it's a fun and fitting design element, considering the truck gets its name from the city of Tacoma, Washington State, which has a mountain and skyline. Here's another one. Check out the left headlights mounting point to the truck's body. You'll see some small numbers stamped on with the digits 46.853 and negative 121.76. Those numbers are something that most people relic, ignore, or assume they're just parts numbers. But actually, those aren't random numbers. These are the coordinates to the summit of Mount Rainier, which is a large active volcano about 70 miles southeast of the city of Tacoma. Or check on the side of the dash when you open the door. You'll see some dots and you might think those are random pinholes. But actually, it's the Morse code that says accessory ready. If you're wondering what all that means, well, Toyota says there are QR codes on different areas of the dash panel. Basically, if you want to modify certain things of the truck, you can scan the QR codes on your smartphone and it'll take you to a website with dimensions to print 3D accessories like a toolkit or a lantern, which you can then mount to the car. Especially if you're an off-roader, you'll probably want to modify your truck anyway and Toyota wants to help make it easier. By the way, check out this hidden trick with the Tacoma taillights. So normally with full-size trucks, you get a power open close function on a tailgate. But Toyota offers this as an option on the Tacoma, making the Tacoma the first mid-sized truck to offer this convenience. If you're an audiophile, you'll love the new Tacoma with a 10-speaker JBL sound system upgrade. It includes JBL Flex Portable speakers that dock in the dash, but it can be removed so you can take it to your campsite, and it lasts up to six hours. The portable speaker will even survive after being submerged under three feet of water. By the way, there was a study done in 2019 among American truck owners. Turns out that 75% of truck owners use their trucks to tow just once a year. When I read that, it made me think, do most truck owners really need full-size trucks? Ten years ago, if you wanted a mid-sized pickup, you only had three choices to choose from in the market. The Tacoma was one of them, and believe it or not, Toyota commanded 60% share in the mid-sized pickup segment. Since then, other car makers have rolled out their version. And today, there's seven gas-powered pickups in the mid-sized segment. And half of those brands have already announced 
best redesigned pickups this year. Ford just unveiled its redesigned Ranger. GM has redesigned its Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon. In fact, the midsize market has grown in the U.S. so much to the point that Toyota now owns 40% of the segment. Now, 40% is still a lot, but it's nowhere near the position Toyota used to hold. Right behind the Toyota in the market segment is GM. She owns 19% of the market share. Next is Stellantis with the Jeep Gladiator at 12.8% of the market share. The Nissan Frontier is 12.5% and the Ford Ranger at 9.4%. We're looking at the Mazda CX-50. I'll show you how it fares compared to top competitors in the compact crossover segment, including the 2024 models of the Toyota RAV4, Honda CRV, Hyundai Tucson, and Ford Bronco Sport. And I'll tell you why the CX-50 is among the top compact crossovers out there in the market right now. And stick around to hear about the hybrid version of the CX-50, and if or when the U.S. will get a hybrid version anytime soon. Now, before we see how the Mazda CX-50 stacks up against the competition, first you have to understand the difference between the CX-50 versus the CX-5. Both are compact crossovers by Mazda, and they have similar names, but these are two unique and different models. Some folks anticipated the CX-50 would replace the CX-5 altogether, similar to how the CX-90 replaced the CX-9. But to the surprise of many, Mazda nevertheless released the 2024 CX-5, along with the CX-50. One of the most significant differences between these two crossovers is their design and intent. The CX-50 was crafted for adventure, and that's why it's more rugged off-road feel. As such, the CX-50 costs more than the CX-5, and it offers more features too. On the other hand, the CX-5 was designed more for everyday drivers, who rarely veer off of smoothly paved roads and surfaces. Overall, the 2024 Mazda CX-50 is larger than the CX-5. I'm talking wider and longer, although it is slightly shorter. You can feel it when you drive. The CX-50 also rides on a longer wheelbase than the CX-5. I'm talking 110.8 inches versus 106.2 inches. On the other hand, the CX-5 offers better maneuverability in tight spots compared to the CX-50 because of its shorter wheelbase and car length. Now under the hoods, both the CX-50 and CX-5 both offer a standard 2.5 liter inline four-cylinder engine that can pump out 187 horsepower. And with this engine, both crossovers can tow up to 2,000 pounds. Both crossovers also offer a six-speed automatic tranny and i-active all-wheel drive as standard equipment. As far as acceleration and torque is concerned, there's a small difference between the two crossovers. The CX-50 offers 186 pound-feet, whereas the CX-5 offers 185. But you do have the option to go turbo. The turbocharged CX-50 bumps it up to 250 horses and 320 pound-feet of torque. And you also get more towing capacity, 3,500 pounds to be exact. On the other hand, if you turbocharge the CX-5, you get up to 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. When it comes to fuel economy, the CX-5 has a leg up. We're talking 26 miles per gallon in the city and 31 on the highway. Whereas the CX-50 offers 24 in the city and 30 on the highway let's look at how the CX-50 stacks against its competition. As far as exterior is concerned, the 2024 Mazda CX-50 is 185.8 inches long. That makes it one of the longest vehicles in the compact crossover segment. The CX-50's wheelbase measures 110.8 inches. As far as ground clearance is concerned, it offers 8.6 inches of clearance. To put that into perspective, that's almost close to the 2024 Ford Bronco Sport, which has one of the highest ground clearances in the segment, offering 8.8 inches. However, the CX-50 is a relatively short crossover by height. I'm talking just 63.9 inches tall, whereas the 2024 Ford Bronco Sport, which is one of the taller crossovers available, towers over it at 71.4 inches. But let's talk about power and performance. The turbocharged Mazda CX-50 can pump out up to 256 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque and offers a towing capacity of up to 3,500 pounds. And that's really good when you compare it with the 2024 Hyundai Tucson, which offers a measly 187 horsepower. Other compact crossovers on today's list come close. For example, the 2024 Ford Bronco Sport is close to that with up to 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. But the CX-50 still comes out on top. If you've been paying attention to Mazda over the last decade, then you're most likely heard of Sky Active. Skyactiv has been around for more than 10 years. Here's what happened. Mazda realized that 70 to 80% of the available energy in a drop of fuel got lost and the vehicle's powertrain couldn't be transferred to the wheels. 
That's what prompted the research and development that ultimately led to the technology known as Sky Active. At the time, the idea was to create the next generation of unique Mazda technology systems, structures, and component designs. What it led to was technology that increases fuel efficiency and engine output. Interestingly enough, Mazda said the term Sky Active evolved from the catchphrase, the sky's the limit. Anyway, whenever you see a Sky Active badge on the back of a Mazda, it signifies that the car has been fit with exclusive equipment, designs, and technologies. The 2024 Mazda CX-50 is no exception. Just like most modern gasoline engines out there, Sky Active engines use a fuel injector that sprays gasoline at high pressure directly into the combustion chamber, known as direct direct injection. The gasoline then bypasses the intake valves and the fuel gets delivered directly to the best location for combustion. Here in North America, Sky Active engines are built to run on good old regular grade gasoline. If you use premium gasoline in a Sky Active engine, it will come with certain performance benefits, but premium gas is not necessary for Sky Active engines. Then there's Sky Active G. Sky Active G achieves the world's highest gasoline engine compression ratio for mass production engine vehicles with the help of 4 to one exhaust system. To be exact, it's 14 to 1 on European spec models. North America models achieve a compression ratio of 13 to 1. The bottom line is that Sky Active G offers 15% more torque and fuel economy and improved low engine speed torque for better daily driving compared to Mazda's non-Sky Active engines. Right now, the 2024 Mazda CX-50 only comes in gas-powered options. It comes standard with a six-speed automatic transmission, and unlike some of its competitors, the Mazda CX-50 also comes standard with all-wheel drive. This is because of Mazda's latest iActive all-wheel drive system. This latest system uses different sensors to figure out how much power to send to the rear wheels. And these sensors are what ensure optimal grip and efficiency. As far as fuel economy is concerned, the base Mazda CX-50 with a 2.5 liter Sky Active G engine comes with a fuel economy rating of 24 miles in the city and 30 mile per gallon on the highway. By comparison, the 2024 Toyota RAV4 offers better even with the gas-powered version. The base gas-powered RAV4, which is the LE trim, gives 27 in a city and 35 on a highway. Of course, the RAV4 hybrid LE trim does even better. It gives you 41 in a city and 38 on a highway. The RAV4 comes almost neck to neck with the 2024 Honda CRV, which also comes in either gas or hybrid versions. The CRV base gas model trim, which is the LX trim, gives you 28 in the city and 34 on the highway. But mind you, that's with the turbocharged engine. And of course, the hybrid CRV gives more. Specifically, the CRV two wheel drive sport hybrid gives you 43 in the city and 36 on the highway. If price is your priority, the Mazda CX50 starting MSRP is 30,300 bucks. That's not terrible when you compare it to the 2024 Ford Bronco Sport, which has an MSRP starting at $31,230. But don't get me wrong, the CX-50 is far from the cheapest in the category. The Mazda CX-50 costs more than the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CRV, and certainly more than the Hyundai Tucson, for example, which is the starting MSRP of $27,250. Despite its relatively higher initial price tag, the 2023 CX-50 scored high ratings for its resale value. So the forecast for the 2024 resale value is assumed to rate similarly. Speaking of the previous model of the 2023 CX-50, it also scored high in driving experience ratings. I'm talking 88 out of 100. To put that in perspective, other brands like Nissan, Toyota, Honda, Hyundai usually find their driving experience ranked in the lower 80s at best, if not the 70s. So the assumption is the same for the 2024 CX-50. Now, when Mazda debuted its gas-powered CX-50, it hinted about a hybrid CX-50 sometime in the future. So there's much anticipation for a hybrid CX-50 to become available here in the U.S. Just consider a few facts. Hybrid vehicles in general offer better gas mods than traditional gas-powered cars. Consider two how consumer demand for battery electric cars has been leveling off in recent times, whereas demand for hybrid vehicles is increasing. Believe it or not, a hybrid CX-50 currently exists and has already been launched, but the thing is, it's only in China. Early in 2023, Mazda's Chinese joint venture, also known as Chang'an Mazda, revealed a hybrid CX-50 hybrid for the Chinese market. That's when Mazda announced that the hybrid CX-50 for China would use Toyota's hybrid technology. And now this hybrid CX-50 has been available since November 2023. Seeing that the hybrid CX-50 already exists in the market, it raises the probability that we will see a hybrid CX-50 stateside soon. According to the rumors, we may see a hybrid CX-50 that's fit with a 2-liter engine. And this engine will be borrowed straight from Toyota. True, Toyota is one of Mazda's biggest competitors, but Mazda borrowing the engine tech from Toyota actually makes sense, seeing that the current CX-50 is manufactured alongside the Toyota Corolla Cross at the Mazda-Toyota Joint Manufacturing Plant in Huntsville, Alabama. Right now, 
The Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid is also powered by a hybrid 2-liter four-cylinder engine that outputs 196 horsepower, and it's paired with an electronically controlled continuously variable transmission, or eCVT for short. Thing is, Mazda has never been a fan of CVTs. That's why it developed its own Skyactiv dry automatic transmission to blend the benefits of a dual-clutch transmission, CVT, and traditional automatic into a single gearbox. So there's a small chance that Mazda may power the hybrid CX-50 with its internally sourced Mazda eSkyActiv 2-liter M-Hybrid powertrain, or maybe the eSkyActiv G 2-liter powertrain. And if that's so, then Mazda will probably couple it with the Skyactiv drive transmission. But in all honesty, I believe there's less likely an option for Mazda to deploy its own engine. Personally, I think Mazda may take the Toyota route since that's how it's approaching the market in China today. To be sure though, there is no release date for a hybrid CX-50 here in the States. If or when it gets released, pricing should be several thousand dollars above the CX-50 turbo versions. And best guess is are maybe an extra three or four trim levels to add to the overall lineup the Toyota Corolla Cross. I'm talking about the relatively new compact crossover that's built on the same TNGA-C platform as the Corolla, but has a vehicle size that's somewhere between the CHR and the RAV4. I'll explain how the Corolla Cross differs from the Corolla sedan and hatchback versions. I'll also share with you how it competes against other compact crossovers like Honda, CRV, Chevy Equinox, Nissan Rogue, and Subaru Forester. And hang tight to see what we can expect from the upcoming 2024 Corolla Cross. The Corolla Cross is still a young vehicle. Toyota only released it starting with the 2022 model. The crossover gets its name from Toyota's best-selling and reliable compact sedan, the Corolla. The crossover sits on the same Corolla platform, and its interior matches the classic sedan's overall styling, materials, layout, technology, and convenience features. If you want to see the key differences between the sedan version versus the crossover, let's talk about performance. A standard Corolla comes with two engine options, a 2-liter four-cylinder engine that pumps out 169 horsepower and a hybrid version that pumps out 134 horsepower. The Corolla also offers a high-performance version with the GR Corolla. I'm talking about a whopping 300 horsepower, turbocharged 1.6-liter three-cylinder engine. On the other hand, Corolla Cross comes with a 2-liter four-cylinder engine that pumps out 169 horsepower or a fifth generation Toyota hybrid system that delivers a peak power output of 196 horsepower. Now, if you're interested in fuel efficiency, the Corolla comes out on top. The gas powered 2023 Corolla has an estimated economy of up to 34 miles combined. And the Corolla hybrid has a gas mileage of up to 50 combined miles per gallon. On the flip side, the gas powered Corolla Cross has a fuel economy of up to 32 combined MPG. And its hybrid version offers 37 combined MPG if you get front wheel drive or 42 if you get the S trim with all wheel drive. Both the classic Corolla and the Corolla Cross offer a traction enhancing all wheel drive system. If you're into off roading, the Corolla Cross is the better choice. That's because it has higher ground clearance than the classic Corolla. I'm talking up to 8.1 inches versus 6.7 inches. Also, if you need to tow, the Corolla Cross can tow up to 1,500 pounds, where the classic Corolla is not rated for towing at all. Now, the Corolla Crossover hatchback and sedan version each seat five people, but the Corolla Cross is the largest of them all, both inside and out. Inside, the Crossover offers a total passenger volume of 95 cubic feet, compared to the sedan that offers 88.6 cubic feet, or the hatchback version that offers only 84.6 cubic feet. So, it's more spacious of the three options. If cargo space is important to you, your best bet again is the Corolla Cross. I'm talking a cargo space of 21.5 cubic feet, but if you fold down the back seat, you'll get a max cargo capacity of 66.8 cubic feet. That's far more than the Corolla hatchback gives you, which is 23 cubic feet, or what the sedan offers, which is 13.1 cubic feet, just because you're limited to a fixed trunk. As far as safety is concerned, let's be clear. The Corolla sedan, Corolla hatchback, and the Corolla Cross all do well here. For the 2023 model year, for example, all three vehicles earned the IIHS Top Safety Pick Award. The Corolla Cross comes with the Toyota Safety Sense version 3.0, which is the latest state-of-the-art suite of dynamic safety features. If you're on a budget and pricing is your top concern, well, the 2023 Corolla sedan is the least costly. It starts at $21,700 for the base level and $26,850 for the XSE trim. 
By contrast, the hatchback starts at $23,155 for the base trim and $26,580 for the highest trim. On the other hand, the Corolla Cross starts at $23,610 for the base L trim and $27,715 for the XLE trim. If you want to go hybrid, the starting price of the sedan version is $23,050. As for the hatchback, it doesn't come in a hybrid version for 2023. Although Toyota will offer it in the 2024 hatchback. As for the crossover hybrid, the hybrid version is more expensive than the gas powered version. However, it's still cheaper than the other hybrid crossovers like the RAV4. The Corolla Cross Hybrid version base starts at $27,970, where the highest hybrid XSE starts at $31,065 before optional add-ons. All in all, if you're wondering whether Corolla sedan, hatchback, or crossover is better, well, honestly, depends on what you need and value in a car. The standard Corolla excels in fuel efficiency and lower base price. Plus, there's also the powerful GR Corolla variant. But the Corolla Cross wins if you want more passenger and cargo space, towing capability, and some off-road experience. That said, all-wheel drive is handier in inclement weather like snowy conditions. But don't expect extreme wild off-roading even with the all-wheel drive system. Yes, it can handle some rocks and rolling in the mud, but it's not the best off-roader out there. Actually, it's subpar. And also, don't expect certain basic features for a car of its stature. For example, you won't get a heated steering wheel, which can be a letdown for some people. Right now, almost every Toyota that's sold in America is built domestically here in the States. It's no different for the Corolla Cross, which is made on U.S. soil. To be specific, it's assembled in Huntsville, Alabama. Funny enough, the plant assembles the Corolla Cross isn't a 100% Toyota plant. It's actually co-owned by Mazda. Now, this isn't the first time that Toyota and Mazda have teamed up, and it probably won't be the last either. Both Toyota and Mazda have a 50% share of the Mazda Toyota manufacturing plant in Alabama. It's a multi-billion dollar investment by these two car giants. Now, mind you, this is no small plan. Right now, the factory is producing the Toyota Corolla Cross and the Mazda CX-50 side by side. And it can hold some 4,000 workers with the capability to churn out 300,000 cars total each year. But for the Toyota Corolla Cross to rise, another vehicle must fall. And that Toyota is the CHR, which is subcompact crossover. Early last year, Toyota announced that the CHR would be discontinued here in the U.S. after the 2022 model year. Of course, the Corolla Cross did have a part in that decision, but it wasn't entirely responsible. The fact is, of all Toyota models out there in the market, the CHR was never really a big hit among consumers. There were a lot of negative reviews, and those didn't go unnoticed by Toyota. To put the CHR into perspective, you can look at the Corolla Cross. The Corolla Cross has only been around since the 2022 model year, and it's already blown the CHR are out of the water, at least when it comes to critic and consumer reviews. The thing is, the Corolla Cross is longer, wider, and taller than the CHR. On top of that, the Corolla Cross is cheaper too, so you're getting a slightly larger vehicle for $1,000 less. That's a bargain indeed. And if that's not enough, the Corolla Cross is also more powerful than the CHR. The 2023 Corolla Cross with the 2-liter 4-cylinder engine pumps out 169 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque, compared to the CHR, which only pumps out 144 hours bar and 139 pound-feet of torque. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the CHR is a bad vehicle, I'm just stating the facts. The CHR is slow, very slow. The Corolla Cross also offers better fuel efficiency than the CHR. I'm talking 31 miles per gallon in the city and 33 miles per gallon on the highway, compared to the CHR's 27 miles in the city and 31 on the highway. So you can see why consumers readily preferred the Corolla Cross over the CHR. Well, it's the end of the road for the CHR here in North America. The CHR lives on across the pond. According to reports, Toyota's optimistic about the development of the next generation CHR in the European market. It's expected that the 2024 CHR will be offered in Europe exclusively with hybrid power. With its European CHR, Toyota is aiming for a more innovative and avant-garde look. But now let's zero in on the 2024 model of the Corolla Cross and how it fares against top competitors in the compact crossover market. Let's start by talking about the powertrain. With the 2024 model, you again have the choice between a traditional gasoline or hybrid powertrain. When it comes to traditional gasoline powertrain, I'm talking about a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine that can churn out 169 horsepower and 150 pound-feet of torque. With this powertrain, front-wheel drive is standard, but all-wheel drive is available as an auction too. Early reviews had found that with this powertrain, option, the 2024 Corolla Cross can accelerate from 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds. To put that in perspective, the Corolla Cross's primary rival is the 2024 Honda HRV, and it can accelerate from 0 to 60 in 9 seconds. What about the hybrid option? Test drives have found that the 2024 Corolla Cross Hybrid can reach 60 miles an hour in 7.3 seconds. 
seconds. Now let's talk about fuel efficiency. The 2024 Corolla Cross EPA estimated fuel economy rating is 31 miles in the city and 33 on the highway. If you opt for the all-wheel drive XLE trim, we're looking at 29 miles a gallon in the city and 32 miles on the highway. Actually, that's fairly average compared to the competition. If you opt for hybrid, you're looking at 45 in the city and 38 on the highway. Now, when it comes to safety features, the 2024 Corolla Cross has the works. I'm talking adaptive cruise controls, lane departure warning, automated emergency braking, road sign assist, and auto high beam. This is on par with the competition, like the 2024 Chevy Equinox that offers standard safety features across its models like standard forward collision warning, automated emergency braking, standard lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, and available adaptive cruise control. Inside the 2024 Corolla Cross, you'll find an 8-inch infotainment screen that runs the latest Toyota software. Android, Audio, Apple CarPlay, and Sirius XM Satellite come standard. Wireless smartphone charging and rear seat USB charging ports are optional. This is pretty high tech compared to the competition. Take the 2024 Honda HRV for example. All 2024 HRV models come with either a 7 or 9 inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But if you opt for the 9 inch screen, you can only get wireless connectivity at the top EXL trim. The EXL trim also comes standard with a wireless smartphone charging pad. Sirius XM satellite radio and Wi Fi hotspot are also available with the 2024 HRV. Now let's talk about the warranty on the 2024 Corolla Cross. It includes a pretty basic standard warranty package. But to make the deal a little sweeter, Toyota is throwing in two years of complimentary scheduled maintenance. The limited warranty covers three years of 36,000 miles, and the powertrain warranty is five years of 60,000 miles. But now you tell me, would you like to get behind the wheel of the 2024 Corolla Cross? How do you think the 2024 Corolla Cross will fare against its competitors? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.